Is the Republican Party the party of Trump forever? We ask because it appears the most visible members of the GOP, like Republican Congressman Matt Gates and Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, are out and about saying stuff like this. Who is your president? <laughs> That's my president, too. We have never abandoned Trump. And he has never abandoned America. He is still fighting for us. He will continue to fight for us. And we're going to have his back when he does. In Virginia today, Republicans voted to choose their nominees for governor, as well as two other statewide offices. We do not know the outcome yet, but there was no shortage of candidates loyal to Trump. In fact, the state's Democratic Party tells The Washington Post, quote, every Republican candidate for governor has two things in common. They are completely committed to Donald Trump and they are too extreme for Virginia. In case you haven't noticed, Trump loyalty has turned into a litmus test for Republicans across the country. The third most powerful Republican in the House, Liz Cheney, could lose her leadership role because she voted for impeaching Trump. So GOP obsessed with who loves Trump and who doesn't. You can't help but ask what the GOP has to offer voters, the people who elect them, people who they work for. By looking at that, the GOP continues to prove it doesn't give but only takes. GOP-led legislatures like in Florida and Texas have voted to restrict voting rights. States like Arkansas have planned bans on trans youth. Iowa could be next with a proposed ban on trans girls playing on teams that align with their gender identity. And several GOP legislatures are working to limit the right to protest. Why do Republican voters put up with it? There are many answers to that question. Among them, abortion. The city of Lubbock, Texas, just banned abortions within the city limits, defining them as murder. And the fetal heartbeat bill is making its way through the Texas legislature, banning abortions at six weeks, which is before most women even know they are pregnant. Well, it may work for now, but this style of politics lasts forever in the GOP. Joining me to help answer that question, Megan Malloy, founder and executive director of Republican Women for Progress. Also with us, Matt Dowd, founder of Country Over Party. He is a former chief strategist of the Bush-Cheney administration and best-selling author of A New Way, Embracing the Paradox as We Lead and Serve. Megan, I want to start with you because there is all of that news about abortion, and I wonder why that issue remains such an effect hook for keeping conservatives on board who might otherwise have big reservations about this Republican Party. Well, thanks for having me, Alicia. And, you know, I think Republicans have been able to continue to use abortion as an effective hook really for a couple of reasons. You know, when it kind of serves as a full litmus test for them, you know, it allows them to wholly accept or wholly reject really any given candidate without having to look at the rest of their platform, their background, or their policy proposals. I mean, you know, think God forbid if uh, someone like Lauren Boebert had come out and given anyone the slightest inkling that she might support a woman's right to choose, the party would have actually had to look at the rest of her agenda. And, you know, I think um, second, to some extent, it gives them the ability to hide these political decisions or political impulses uh, to some extent behind the guise of religion. You know, these candidates are able to say, well, you know, I'm anti-choice because that's the good Christian thing to do. But, you know, somehow these folks haven't stepped foot in a church maybe ever, and somehow their pro-life agenda doesn't really include pro-lives of children at the border or pro-life-saving health care for so many underrepresented communities or really pro any other number of lives. Well, Matt, you write one political party, the GOP, has become an anti-truth, anti-democratic entity, and it is time we point that out clearly and strongly. It is not just a bug in the system of Republicans. It is a prominent required feature of the Republican Party. I guess my question then, Matt, is can that be undone? And where does that then leave once and future Republicans like you and Megan? Well, I don't think it can be done in the, among the Republican Party as it's currently constituted. It is seeped through the whole thing. It's not just Donald Trump. To me, Donald Trump is a reflection of what the Republican Party became. He didn't cause the Republican Party to become this. And it is dominated by this thing. I remember full well, as probably you do, that William Bennett's book, The Book of Virtues, used to be carried under the arms of all Republicans who had a chapter on honesty in the 90s and in the 2000s. And now it seems they have traded that book in, trashed it, and have the Prince by Machiavelli, which is the ends justify the means. And that's the party that we're at. I think it's 
I think it's incumbent on everyone to understand that, but most importantly on, among people like Liz Cheney and Mitt Romney, who think that they can speak out and somehow change the party, they can't change this Republican party. It is what it is. It has become that they either have to leave or join another party. 